Greetings to all of you, my dear sisters and brothers and my dear friends, and a warm welcome to all of you from your pastor, Yadi. Today in our Be Encouraged, the study of the Second Corinthian letter, we are in Heart to Heart, Part 2. And we're going to speak about the third very important um, message that Paul gave to us, an appeal for reconciliation. And we are now in chapter 7 of 2 Corinthians, the verses 2 to 16. Open wide your hearts to us. See for that on 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 16, verse 13. Receive us. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 2. Can two walk together except they be agreed? And that is from the, the little prophets Amos chapter 3, verse 3. If the Corinthians would only cleanse their lives and their church fellowship, God would receive them. 2 Corinthians 6, 17. And they could again have close fellowship with Paul. The emphasis in this section is on the way God encouraged Paul after he had um, experienced such a great trials in Asia and Troas. You can see that in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, then verses 8 to 10, and chapter 2, the verses 13. 12 and 13. And there is actually a threefold encouragement recorded in these verses. The first one is Paul encourages the church, verses uh, 2 and 4. The church has received Titus. Now they should receive Paul in chapter 7, verse 13. And Paul asked them to trust him, for he had never done anything to wrong them. This is certainly a reference to the false teachers who had accused Paul, especially the use of the word defrauded. Paul is taking up this missionary offering so he can use the money himself. They were saying, why is it so difficult to assure people of our love? What more could Paul do to convince them? He was willing to die for them, if necessary, for they were in his heart. He was boasting of them to others, glorifying of you, but they were criticizing him. But in spite of these problems, Paul had good reason to encourage the church, because the visit of Titus had been successful, and now there, were, there was an opportunity to mend defenses and restore fellowship. This leads to the second encouragement. Here we go. Titus encouraged Paul, verses 5 and 10. The first encouragement Paul received was the coming of Titus after they had been separated from each other. It was not easy to communicate or travel in those days, and Paul had to depend on the providence of God for this plans to work out regarding the visit of Titus to Corinth. Even with our modern means of transportation and communication, we still need to depend on God's providence. And sometimes we forget that. You know, it's not our plans. It is God. is the one who makes our plans. Paul, but Paul was encouraged by the report that Titus gave of his reception at Corinth. They had reached Paul's painful letter and had repented of their sins and disciplined the members who had created the problems. It is unfortunate that the King James Version translated two different Greek words as repent, for they have different meanings. The word repent in 2 Corinthians 7, 8 means regret and repented in 2 Corinthians 7 verse 10 means to be regretted. 
two different meanings. Paul had written them a stern letter and then had regretted it. But the letter achieved its purpose and the Corinthians repented. And this made Paul rejoice. Their repentance was not merely a passing regret. It was a true godly sorrow for sin. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. But wonderly sorrows brings death, Second Corinthians, and this is an IV translation, 7 verse 10. The difference is seen in Judas and Peter. Judas repented himself, was full of regret, and went and committed suicide. While Paul wept and repented, uh, I mean when Peter wept and repented of his fall. You can read that in Matthew 26, verse 75 and 27, verse 5. Do Christians need to repent? Jesus said that we do. Luke 17, verse 3 and 4. And Paul agreed with him. Four of the seven churches of Asia, minor, listed in Revelations 2 and 3, were commanded to repent. To repent simply means to change one's mind, and disobedient Christians need to repent, not in order to be saved, but in order to restore their close fellowship with God. I'm going to repeat it. Do Christians need to repent? Jesus said that we do, and Paul agreed with him. For of the seven churches of Asia Minor, listed in Revelation 2 and 3, were commanded to repent. To repent simply means to change one's mind, and disobedient Christians need to repent. For what? Not in order to be saved, but in order to restore their close fellowship with God. And then the third one, the Corinthians encouraged Titus, verses 11 and 16. They went to great lengths to do the will of God. First of all, they received Titus and refreshed him by their fellowship. They rejoiced his heart as they proved to be all that Paul boasted that they were. They accepted this message from Paul and acted on it. In 2 Corinthians 7.11, Paul spelled out their handling of the matter of discipline. For behold, what earnestness this very thing, this godly sorrow, has produced in you. What vindication of yourselves, what indignation, what fear, what longing, what zeal, what avenging of wrong. In everything you demonstrated yourself to be innocent in the matter. Paul was encouraged with Titus told him of the way they repented and showed concern and zeal to do what was right. Paul assured them that the purpose of this letter was not only to rebuke the offender and help the offended, but to prove his love for the church. Paul had suffered a great deal because of this situation, but the suffering was worth it all now that the problem was solved. One of the most difficult things is to do is to rebuild, uh, to rebuild a scattered relationship. This Paul tried to do in 2 Corinthians, and especially in chapters 6 and 7. Unfortunately, there are many scattered relationships today in homes, churches, and ministries, and they can be repaired and strengthen it only when people face problems honestly, deal with them biblically and lovingly, and seek to get right with God. As you and I examine our own lives, we must determine to be a part of the answer and not a part of the problem. We must show appreciation, practice separation, 
and encourage reconciliation if God is to, uh, to use us to restore broken relationships. So I'll give you some questions for reflection personally of four groups. One, how important is it to you that others appreciate you? Why? Another one, why should the Christians have appreciated Paul more? A third one, why did Paul mention some of the sacrifices he had made for the ministry? Another, for whom in your life have you neglected to show appreciation? How can you show it now? And another, why were the Christians not fully behind Paul and loving him? Another, what arguments did Paul present to convince the Corinthians not to have close partnership with unbelievers? Another, how are believers to rightfully related to the unbelieving world? Another, how can we be perfecting holiness in the fear of God. And you can find it in chapter 7, verse 1, and two other ones. How are godly sorrow and worldly sorrow different? What determines which type of sorrow a person has? The last one. How can you be part of the answer rather than part of the problem in some current situations? So there you go, my dear ones. This was the end of part two, heart to heart. And on Monday we start chapter seven. In Second Corinthians, in this it will be chapter eight. And we're gonna talk about in also two parts the grace of giving. What well, that is for Monday. I wish you all a very wonderful weekend, a very warm weekend with lovely friends, your children, your grandchildren, and those who are on vacation and listen to this broadcasting. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're a blessing to me too. So have a good one to all of you. This is your Pastor Yeti. And remember, God loves you. Bye.